Hello, parents. This is a quick video to summarize what was discussed in our primary maths webinar in October 2020. At BVIS, we teach the White Rose Maths program, which is a very well known maths program today in many countries around the world and especially in the UK. At BVIS, this program is implemented from F2 into primary and up to the secondary school. The unified use of the White Rose program brings many benefits to teaching and learning in mathematics. Students will learn the same topics but will be expanded and deepened through each year group as they progress through the school. The program structure is clearly creating the best conditions for them to progress through each maths aspect during the year. At the same time, the White Road program focuses on thinking and problem solving. This is also an aspect that the school is focusing on. The Y Rose program is divided into four main areas, number, measurement, geometry, and statistic. The number area will learn about the value of digits in a number, and the children will use this knowledge in counting performing numbers, comparing and routing numbers. Of course, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division are central parts of this area. In addition, the children will learn about percentages and fractions. In the upper year groups, students will learn about ratio and algebra. In the lower years, the early concepts of algebra are introduced by asking children to find missing numbers in equations. In measurement area, students will learn about the units of measurement and how to convert between them, focusing mainly on units of mass, length and volume. They will also learn about money and time, such as how to read the time, to compare and to estimate. In the upper years, students will learn about perimeter, area and volume. In geometry section, the children focusing on identifying, naming and highlighting the properties of 2D and 3D shapes. They also learned about the angle and re the relationships of the angle in the shape, in terms of direction as well as position. Finally, in the field of statistics, the children will learn how to read and analyze the data of the experiments they perform in science. The focus of this area is on creating, analyzing and interpreting graphs using certain types of charts and tables. The highlight of the process the highlight of the process of teaching maths in each year group is that students will learn will be introduced to maths vocabulary in both English and Vietnamese. This is one of the ways we prepare our students for secondary school and practice our bilingualism of the school in the subject. As introduced in any field of mathematics students will be taught how to think mathematical and form mathematical application skills to solve related problems. I have a short video from a math lesson at BVIS for you and I hope you will be able to experience a bit of a mathematical learning atmosphere at the school. Rồi, ok. Rồi, mình đếm lại cô xem. 
Maths can actually be found everywhere and every moment of life. Next, I would like to take you to have a look at a setting that parents can use to help children to learn maths at home. The first example is a ruler or a measuring tape. How can you use this to teach maths? The first choice is usually to measure the length of an object or her side of a shape. But it is also a good way to help support early counting. Instead of always starting with the number one, you could start on, for example, number five, number six, and count up in threes or fours, and then count back. Rulers are also a good way to help children visualize subtraction and addition as part of counting on and counting back and seeing consecutive numbers. For example, what number is before or after five? What is the number between three and five? You can use a deck of cards to teach place value. With younger students, they can pick two or three cards, for example, two, four and nine, and then different questions could be asked. How many different numbers you can create with three digits? Or a little bit harder, can you find the largest number with three digits or the smallest number with three digits and even find a difference between them? Or can you order the numbers you've made? Also, you can practice addition and subtraction. You can draw any two cards and add or subtract those two numbers together. From year three and up, when the students are ready and can recall multiplication facts quickly, we can play games who record the times table facts faster by flipping any two cards and multiply them. Another thinking activity is to arrange the cards in groups. Parents can ask the children to arrange by number, by color or suit. Or sometimes they will make a few groups available and ask the children to state the common characteristics of each group. In addition, we can have the children arrange the cards in a Venn diagram and find the common unique points of two or more groups. In the upper year groups, a deck of cards can also be used to support the teaching or of probability. For example, what is the chance of drawing a black card in a deck? A chance to pick an even or odd number card? Or even, what is the chance to pick a heart? At BVIS, we use very flexible everyday and easy to find items in life to make maths meaningful to the children. Another activity relating to measurements that parents can do at home is to teach their children to tell and read the time. In addition, once the children know how to read the time, you can ask them to calculate the interval or start or end time of an activity. For example, if your child asks you to go into the bookstore for 50 minutes and it is now 2.20, you can ask them, so what time are we going to have to go home? Or another situation where you were playing chess tonight from 6 and your child beats you at 6.25. So how long did the game last? These activities seem to be very simple but bring a lot of benefits to the students. Cooking. Children can practice measurements when participating in cooking with their families. The children can help to read the ingredients and weigh, measure and count with their parents. Surely they will see they are not only learning maths but also having fun cooking. 
With older children, we can teach them how to calculate proportions. For example, the recipe is for four-person meal, but、um, today grandparents come to visit, so we have to adjust the ingredients. And and what are they now? Or another situation like、um, yesterday or the day before, we made a cake and it's it was a bit sweet. So today we will reduce one third of the sugar. How much sugar will mummy need? Shopping and supermarkets are the place where children can practice their calculating abilities effectively. For younger students, we can guide them to use the list of items to buy and and gather the quantity of each item. For example, I need to buy five toothbrushes. Can you count for me? Or today we need five five apples, and I already took two. Or your dad took two. Can you get the rest? To make it slightly more difficult for older children, we can ask the children to calculate or estimate how much the family have to pay for the shopping, or we can ask the children how much do we have to pay for the towels when each costs two hundred thousand dong. How much do we have to pay for the whole family? For older children, we can ask questions about discounts, item prices after being re- reduced, or if we buy two,、um, two, three cartons of milk and there's one free, how much do we normally have to pay for all those four? Or the egg is twenty five percent off today. How much did we save? The activity that I am sure that the children would enjoy is that when they have pocket money from you, from parents, and go shopping, they must see if they have enough money to buy what they like, or if they don't, how much they lack, or with the money that they have, how many items they can afford. As shown above, mathematics can be. Available any time, anywhere. Therefore, it is important that at home parents can discuss and talk to the children. Please help your child your child by speaking out loud your thoughts or ways of thinking to solve a problem, and encourage them to do so. Frequently, students say they know the answer, but are not able to explain how they know. The more practice they have at verbalizing their thinking, the better logical explainers they become. Ask questions to your child's answers. Ask them questions with both the wrong answer and the correct answer to create a mentality that is not only when answer is incorrect that they are asked, "Why did they produce that result?" By regularly asking questions, parents will help them to become more and more confident to present their reasoning. Challenge your child with the question: "What if?" or "What would happen if?" If I did not cook for four people, but now, but for five people, what would the recipe be? If I change tens and hundreds now, what would have happened? Challenge the children, encourage them to ponder more deeply what they are learning. Drawing maps or visualizing questions is also important. Students move from visual to abstract understanding. At school, we encourage them to draw blocks, doodles, and symbols to summarize and understand question more. They should also be encouraged by parents to do this at home, so they can understand the questions more deeply. Sometimes, when they see parents drawing the same way, it will be even more exciting. Thank you.